Quality Assured Films does not condone the misuse of internet reviews. The opinions of Michael and John should be taken lightly prior to the viewing of said movie. We realize no one is perfect and only ask that logic be at least considered. Nothing more. Quality Assured Films. Attack the block. We just watched the film Attack the Block. Attack of the Blocks. It's the story of Lego creator Milton Burrow. Yep, and it was about Lego blocks falling out of the sky and murdering people. What is that? I was pleasantly surprised to be. I was too. I'd highly recommend it. That's an alien, bruv. Believe it. And I landed in the wrong place, though. You get the wrong place. <laughs> Wait, 2011's Attack the Block, a British film about a group of hooligans trying to save the world from an alien invasion. So Themselves, mainly. Exactly. Not really the world. <laughs> what were your thoughts on this film, uh, Mike? <laughs> I... I... I was... I actually enjoyed it, and I didn't think I was going to. I wasn't sure what to think. It started out, and I wasn't sure what the tone was. Yeah, it was very confusing. It was, I, there's very few movies that begin with a robbery. No, I can't even say. I was about to say there's very few movies that begin with a robbery that I enjoy. Yeah. But I think now that actually there are a lot. Yo, check it. More. More what? Them things. Tsunami. It's an alien invasion. Of course it is. It's weird because our main character's... Like, you instantly kind of hate them because they're yeah. robbing a woman at knife point. Right. And this is the group that you're supposed to, uh, you know, invest your time with and, and hope that they succeed in some way. I... And sympathize with. Yeah. Which, by the way... And I kind of was hoping that something terrible would happen to them the whole time. Yes, exactly. Like, they deserved it immediately. I'm killing them! I'm killing them straight! Let's get two up, blood! This movie was a perfect example of, I, I hate to say it, but Britain, like, seeing all the Hollywood uh, movies with the one-liners and, the, and you know, every other mm. word out of each person's mouth was, we're going to save the city. Or, you know, some sort of bull, I don't know. You took your time? Yeah, yeah, they rescue this one guy from the police, and, and the first thing he's like, you took your time? It's, I yeah, you could thank us for rescuing you, right? My fucking hero. <laughs> No one thinks that fast. Oh, no. I, I would be like, uh, yeah, and then I would slam the door. We need to get off the streets. Back in a block. What kind of alien would invade some council estate in South London? One that's looking for a fight. <laughs> now, one thing I wanted to point out, it was kind of the obvious. The main character's name is Moses. Did right. Make that and he led He led them everybody. all to the new world. Yeah. I didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird when he brought the stone tablets down. That was I wasn't odd. sure what that was about. The burning bush made sense, but not, not the... There was the tree in the beginning that was on fire. Oh, that's right. <laughs> what the... F There's so many hidden... This was all biblical. Oh. Wait. This is safe. Good luck. I will give the movie props where they're due, especially, like, they show you the creature. Well, it, it's a little complicated. There's a female creature, and then there's the male creature. But they show you the female creature right away. Like, they're not afraid to show this on screen. Like, they're carrying around the dead body the whole time. And right. It never. I, that I mean, was an interesting twist, because usually the rule is that you're... That, that usually kills the movie. Yeah. If you show it right away, then the tension's gone. Exactly. And you show it all the time in bright light and everything. And, uh... They handled it. Even me, watching it, like, having heard about the movie before, I was like, really? That's it? That's the <laughs> That's the creature? And there's thousands of these things? Of course they're gonna go out and destroy all of them. Oh. So it was an interesting twist on that. It, it fooled the characters, and it fooled me when the... Other like creatures when they showed up. 
Which and that that let's talk about that for a moment. The other creatures. Mm -hmm. Now you said you you did enjoy you like them. I kind of did. They were creepy. They were. I mean, <laughs> they were basically. Are we gonna? Oh, we can spoil we don't the care shit out about. Of the movie. Okay, okay. I guess we might as well. Okay. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah. Skip to, uh... Spoilers, I guess. Something. <laughs> Skip ahead. <laughs> Skip ahead right now if you don't want to know what happens. Um, so, they have the... They're basically gorilla suits. Yeah. Basically, but they have, like, the mouths on them. The yes. neon mouths. The neon mouths. And that made them really creepy. These big jaws with, like, hundreds A of teeth. A row of shark teeth in them. I thought that was really cool, and they were... Blind. Well, that's yeah. That was cool. That was a cool aspect of it. Basically, what's going on is there's a female that comes to Earth. They kill it. The pheromones well, get all over. Well, this is their it. speculation. Well, that's true. Yeah, they never. No one's confirming this, but they're 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 from from watching nature documentaries while high. <laughs> that's right. So the female comes to a planet, spreads the pheromones. Then the males come after her. And follow the scent, and then they have a big monster orgy and, yeah. and breed. Yeah, apparently. and then what? They fucking leave the, the planet. I don't know. Maybe maybe they just. Yeah, I don't know how they would leave <laughs> then. If they're coming in in the crashing, how do they get out of there? Oh, I've got one text left. It's too much madness to explain in one text. Call the police. You'd be better off calling the Ghostbusters. Not the thing that uh, that I that I'm thinking of now is the more plot that develops. Like there's nobody, there's no expert, there's no like scientist character going. This is what's going on. There's no one like. That's true. There's no government person going. Oh well, uh, this is uh, what we've found in our studies or. Uh, something went wrong, and this is what we know, and here's what's going on. Like, it was all them speculating based on the haziest details <laughs> from the most unreliable characters imaginable. You discovered a species hitherto unknown to science. Believe. Maybe there was a party at the zoo, and a monkey shagged a fish. I did think the cameo by Nick Frost was pretty great. Yes, Nick. I had no idea he was going to be in Neither this. Neither did I. I had no clue. Nick Frost plays an amazing guy. That's just which, by the way, he kind of the movies. He he's up on like the nineteenth floor and he's a pot dealer and like the whole movie he's just oblivious to what's going on. He stays in his apartment. Um, there is a point where, of course, the creatures come there later on, but they don't harm him. It was right. great to see though that he just gets to like sit back and not have to worry about them. <laughs> My name ain't Gavin, it's Mayhem, and he's Prob. <laughs> I think kills us. No one is gonna ever call you Mayhem. You keep on acting like such a wussy. One thing that bothered me a lot, this is a rated R movie. There's cursing, there's blood, there's everything. And there were these two little kids in it. Like, May Mayhem and Probs. Yeah, Mayhem and Probs. And they were all about trying to be like this, the, the main characters of the movie. Yeah, and I mean, but yeah, there was no need for those fucking kids they burned they burned the one alive why was there no other creatures there just the one was there yeah. they're like hey lenny just watch the kid in the dumpster we're gonna go climb up the building and try to get the everyone else right and i mean i it guess it wasn't trying to it was just a dumpster with a plastic lid on it they broke through a gate they broke through doors they broke through they had that that cliche moment where it's like we're working together because we're on the same... The, the oh, woman, they said it! They came out and said it. We're on the same side now. The woman they, they, they rob at the beginning of the movie is the woman they have to work with to, to all, you know, stop this invasion. And they, they do it. They point out, we're all on the same side here, so... I did think that was really cheesy. <laughs> Which, by the way, we should talk about. What what were the creatures... Uh, what, what were they doing? Why were they killing our main characters? Oh, because they were covered in... That. Pheromones yes. from the female. So they were only specifically after these five or six uh, individuals. Right. Which, by the way... Or any, yeah, anyone who came in contact with Moses. It's mayhem and he's probs! <laughs> there is this one um, drug dealer guy, rapper or whatever, that... <laughs> he 
he comes in contact with them and he gets the pheromones on him, but he he was probably one of the most annoying characters out of all of them. Right. And he made there's a there's a scene where they're in his uh they're in his pot room, which is like a safe the panic room, basically. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the beginning, they come in, and he's has like a mixing board or whatever yep. sound equipment, and he's he's mixing some fat beats, <laughs> and he comes in, and the he's like, "Hey, listen to this song I just wrote," and they play it, and he's like, "Yeah, that sounds cool." Then later, the same character, the guy that made the song, has his lackeys come pick him up from somewhere. And they have the song, the, and the song's one. playing in the car, fully produced, finished, <laughs> and he's singing along to it. Oh. Get that snitch, get the strap, don't give a fuck, blah, blah, blah. get that snitch, get the strap, don't give a fuck. There were so many forced foreshadowings. There's a part. Oh, with the jump. Yeah. Yeah, the parkour. That, like, this kid's like, I can do it. I can jump off this jump. And they're like, nah, don't do it. And he's like, all right, fine. And he jumps down. You know that they're going to use that at some point. We thought they were going to use it later on at, like, maybe a different location. Yeah. He might have to jump from a building to another building. But instead, it's the exact same <laughs> exact spot. same jump. And he's, and he, yeah, he does it. Like, no problem. He makes it no problem. And it doesn't even help him. No. Not at all. The monsters aren't like, oh, damn, we can't make that jump. Like, they're right on his heels the whole time. Oh. That I, didn't help him at all. And I'll get back to the monsters. I mean, I... I wasn't. I mean, I was impressed by the teeth. I wasn't really impressed by the. It looked like a person in a in a suit running around like like an ape. Um, I thought they were creepy. I don't know. I mean, I, I liked it. Yeah. They were because they were parts. like pitch black. They didn't really have a shape to them, other than the mouth and like when they were running, you could see their claws or whatever. See, I almost wonder if that was their was that them being clever or were they just was that kind of a way to get away from not having to. Show them, like, just show glowing teeth. Well, I think teeth. both. I think both. What is that? I'm pissing myself in it. But at the same time, this is sick. Well, we should talk about the beginning, too. Like, they were... They had no fear at first. They were all about, let's... Th- this alien's fucking attacking. Like, this alien comes from the sky. They have no idea what it is. They just kill it instantly. And right. then... They're all about going out and destroying all these other aliens that just show up. And you're like, hell yeah, like this is awesome. There's no fear, you're not worried about anything. I think because I now that I'm thinking of it, I think it was because they the pod or whatever ship that landed was bigger. Oh and okay. had like I think it had some kind of details on it that kind of showed Oh, okay. And they were like and they're like, wait a minute, I don't think this is like that other thing. It's not they're like, I'm not, thing. I don't want to mess with that other thing over there. Mm, that would make sense then, because... These things look out of our league. I think that's what happened. But what, yeah, I mean, we were watching it, we were like, they were just all gung-ho about coming after these things. Oh, that's different, that ain't even the same thing. That looks triple the size blend. Everyone run! I will say though that it was awesome to see, like we- the weapons they used. Oh yeah! Like they all, right when the stuff starts going down, they all run to their houses. They grab whatever weapons they can. There's samurai swords, bats, not fireworks, fireworks. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely fireworks. Which, by the way, what was this? The Fourth of July or something? I guess this took place during. Is that? Well, it couldn't have been because it's in England. Oh, that's right. What the fuck? Are- but yeah, what were the fireworks for? There was some sort of holiday going on at the beginning of the movie. There's fireworks blowing up in the sky, and that's why they think it's a firework that comes down whenever it's that creature. But yeah, they, they end up using fireworks to... Which I didn't understand to that. Like disorient them? Yeah. Scare them? But they're blind. What? <laughs> There's a scene where they the shoot... noises? Maybe the noises. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Then. It freaks them out. Because they end up making this hallway smoky as shit, which... It was even worse for them. Yeah, for them, yeah. Because they're trying to get down the hallway, but meanwhile, these blind creatures who can smell them yeah. have no issue with the with the smoky hallway, but uh, you know, we lose like two or three characters. Which, by the way, the deaths, I will say, were pretty cool. Yeah, the gore was uh, not too cartoony, Yeah, but uh, it was very well done. I will say the runtime, only an hour and 18 minutes minus the credits... Not bad. The movie moved pretty quickly. Got right to it. 
Yeah, and you do... In terms of keeping my attention and keeping things moving and keeping things interesting, that's great. But you lose... Like, especially in something like this where you want me to care for a completely unsympathetic character. Yeah. Cramming in the fact that he... Uh, live by himself <laughs> with no supervision and his uncle is um, transient and and he um, you know oh well he just you know he just robs to he just robs people at knife point uh, because he didn't have any guidance growing up and he <laughs> He's like in his twenties. Uh, oh, he's fifteen. Oh, he's fifteen. Yeah, he's fifteen. We're supposed to believe this guy yeah. who looks. So and spouse. the girl it looks like she's eighteen. They're like, oh, you're a math teacher. Yeah. And it's like the girl looks younger than they do. Oh my god. And uh, oh, that's something that bothers me in in and you know media at large. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you should mention also that 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 whole backstory of the main character, they tell you five minutes before the movie ends. Right. Like, you know nothing of these people, and then they, they show... This. It would have been fine if he would... If he would have just said what he said in the pot room, which he did, and he was like, hey, I'm, I'm sorry, we wouldn't have robbed you if you if we knew that you lived here. Yeah. That would and, have been fine. Uh, and then the kid was like, he's trying to apologize to you, and it was like, okay, he's coming around. I didn't need her seeing his Spider-Man pajamas <laughs> and uh, a, a baby picture of himself. Yes. What the f- uh, It was... Show us a younger picture of him so we, we, we yeah. sympathize. And then it was like really subtle for him to be swinging by the uh, Union Jack there out of the window at the end. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's right. The ending. He kills... Which, again, we're, we're shown a scene where there's like 30 or 40 of these creatures climbing up this huge complex. And then the end scene is him blowing them all up. Like, he runs into the apartment building, sets off a firework once again, because yeah. fireworks come in handy throughout this movie, and kills the like the remaining 13. But we're supposed to assume that this is all of them. And then they get arrested right, right. after. Like, the cops yeah. don't even question them about it. They just arrest them. Right. And then you hear chanting, like people are chanting Moses' name, the main character's name, and then he just smiles, and then it goes to credits. Is it that's for you? Yes, yeah. those five people out there shouting for <laughs> you. That's for you, man. That's that's your reward in itself. Uh, I, I, oh. One other thing I want to point out real quick: there is a scene ten minutes into the movie. Where they have a bulldog that, I guess, runs off. Well, first off, the bulldog is within two feet of a meteorite that crashed with an alien creature in it. Right. The dog's not reacting at all. The dog's not barking. Right, it's just, just looking there. around. Uh, yeah, just looking around. Then he runs off, runs down the field and to chase what they assume is another monster. And then they just hear noises, which they think the dog's dead. But then the, the main character, well, one of the main characters is like, this is for Billy! Whose dog? Whose dog? The guy whose dog it was. Yeah, the guy whose dog. He's like, this yeah. is for... Which we never even knew the dog. We never have any. There's no investment in these people. There's, yeah. This is a scene that should come <laughs> later on in the movie when you're like. This is like his hero moment. Yeah. And it's like 30 minutes in. It's like, come movie. on. Show it was us. like, um, this is. He had the sword and he was like making his last stand. <laughs> it's like, you've been on screen for 10 minutes. Oh, that reminds me. I did enjoy. Because they're, they're on mopeds at one point. Most of them are on bicycles, BMXs, mopeds. And it was kind of realistic the way they would, like, ride down a, a flight of stairs and then crash at the bottom. Like, instead of a regular movie where they would be able to fly off, you know, they're falling off their motorcycles, they're getting back on, they're crashing into walls. It was more realistic along right. those lines. That's true. That's true. I did I did appreciate that, even though, you know, you were saying about the gorilla suits, I did appreciate that everything looked really practical. All the, all the deaths were... Um, you know the gore and stuff but it wasn't over it wasn't too over the top everything was still you know pretty believable yeah um like there wasn't there wasn't a moment where something looked fake and it took me out of it yeah that's true that is true and that's something that can easily happen with movies like this alien movies uh what was it super 8 i mean well they wait until like the last 10 15 minutes to show you the creature um but yeah i mean I will say that this was a good attempt from from the UK. 
good job. I, if I had to compare... It, it reminded me a lot of the kind of... Uh, uh, like, did you ever see Monster Squad? It was like kind of an 80s movie, bunch of kids, and like the, the universal monsters. Hmm. Like Dracula, Wolfman, Mummy. I think I... I uh, whatever the fuck. Creature <laughs> from the Black Tar, whatever. Lagoon. <laughs> Sea monster dude. Um, they all could descend on this town and there's a bunch of kids in a tree house and have to like fight off the monsters. So it, it reminded me a lot of that kind of like Goonies, like 80s, like even though it was a lot, obviously this is a lot more violent and yes. um, m like mature. In terms of the audience, it was, you know, playing for, but it reminded me of that kind of, you know, everything's practical. It's it's dark, but it's sort of funny and campy. Exactly. That, um, they embrace the the the, the humor. kids. The kids are, um, in, you know, instead of cowering and running away, they're actively planning. You know, they have to come up with a plan the whole time. They have. Um, the weapons are kind of doing the best they can in in spite of the odds. And, yeah. uh, I think, so it kind of reminded me, I always, I always think, like, I wish we could have more movies that went back to that, where the, um, instead of having the kids having to be rescued, like, the kids have only have themselves to rely on. Yes, I think that you know, seeing those kind of movies made an impression on me as a kid, and I don't see too many too many of those sorts of movies now. <laughs> so, would you? Uh, is this a good movie? You think this is a good movie? Well, I. I think I would have been mad if I have. I don't even know if it was in the theater here. I don't think so. Okay. I'm pretty sure. It was. I mean, uh, you know, for a for a weeknight, just hanging out, that it was pretty entertaining for me. I would I would recommend it in that kind of scenario, watching it with a buddy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I don't know. Even at the short run time, I don't know if I would have made it through by myself. I don't know if it would have held my interest just by myself, but uh, I think I would recommend it, actually. I would recommend it. Quality approved. Yeah, I mean, I, I would probably recommend it, as you said, like with a buddy, maybe like a group of people, just everyone having fun, getting tipsy and watching it. Um, had I been watching this by myself, yeah, I probably would have turned it off midway through, just after the 19th quick one-liner. It's an alien, bruv, believe it. I, but, um, I mean, but again, I was entertained the entire time. I did kind of want to know what happened. And, uh, but I will say I was disappointed the moment it hit credits. I was like, really? Really? Yeah, the, uh, the resolution was not satisfying whatsoever. We have no, I mean, again, as you said, that kid speculating, the kid that, that smokes pot and watches the Discovery Channel, we still have no idea why these aliens came. Had this group not interfered and not killed that female, what would have happened? Were there more coming? Right. Would they have d did what that kid said and banged throughout? The, the stakes were them staying alive. Yes. It, it, wasn't it wasn't necessarily any larger than that, which they sort of commented on. When they were like, oh, it's not worldwide, it's local. It's just local. Which, how did they know that? How did they know? Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know that. <laughs> oh, movies. Well, that's Attack the Block. Uh, 2011 it came out, May. If I'm not mistaken. That, wow. How long ago? I know. Quality Assured Films. I'm John Frampton. This is Michael McCubbin. And we are Quality, Quality Assured, Assured Films. films. Smell that super gross. All you hear is super floss. That snitch, get the strap. Don't give a fuck. Get that snitch, get the strap. Don't give a fuck.